Hi everyone, welcome back to my service dog and me. I'm Kate and today we're gonna to be talking about some of the top reasons that positive reinforcement may not be working for you and your dog in any given situation. Now, as I mentioned in the welcome video of this channel, Helping owner trainers use positive reinforcement more effectively is our primary goal at My Service Dog and Me. So whether that be here on the channel, in our free Facebook group, or in our online courses, and you can find all those links in the description of this video, um, our primary goal, regardless of the type of service dog you're training, where you are on that training journey, or what other methods you're using, is helping you to use positive reinforcement more effectively. Because... Learning how to be a good trainer isn't a journey that ends. That's something we're always doing is learning how to be better and better. So we're going to go through the top reasons that my coaches and I tend to see positive reinforcement in quotes fail for students. But I want to make two things clear. First of all, the biggest reason that positive reinforcement fails is because the whole picture isn't being looked at. People tend to say something like, well, this treat isn't working, and so therefore positive reinforcement doesn't work, or they're not seeing the results they're looking for, so they're assuming positive reinforcement won't work in any given situation. But generally, the whole picture is not being taken into account, and there's a lack of understanding of how to actually apply positive reinforcement in a specific situation, which is very normal. When we're new at something, we don't know how to necessarily apply it in every situation. That's okay. And I also want you to remember that by definition, positive reinforcement is something that increases the likelihood that a behavior will happen again. So if you are not seeing an increase in, a, in whatever behavior you're trying to increase, then you aren't using positive reinforcement regardless of whether you're in or regardless of what your intention is. So your intention may be to use positive reinforcement, but if it's not increasing a behavior, you're not using positive reinforcement. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more here in a few minutes. So let's get started. And do keep in mind, this is not necessarily like a comprehensive list. And if you need help at all learning how to apply these things, um, or fix these things in your situation, our free Facebook group is always the best place to ask questions. And we also have our foundations course, which goes through these things in depth. So let's get into it. The first reason that we see positive reinforcement fail is that there's an issue with your criteria, your rate of reinforcement, or your timing. And usually when positive reinforcement fails, like 98% of the time, if it's not working for you, there is an issue in one of these things. So your timing is off. Maybe you're not marking on time. Maybe you're not delivering, you know, there's something wrong with your mechanics. Maybe you're not delivering the treat as effectively as possible. These are things we talked about a couple videos ago when I talked about using a marker with your service dog. I talked about timing in that video. Your rate of reinforcement is how many treats sort of per minute your dog is earning in a training session. The more treats he earns per minute, the faster he's going to learn. And eventually you fade those treats out. And one of the things that didn't make this list, but should have, because then I'd have had an even 10, is that you've tried to fade the treats out too quickly. That's a huge reason we see positive reinforcement fail. You will not have to give your dog a treat every single time he performs a behavior forever. But in the beginning, when he's learning something, the more treats he earns, the faster he's going to learn. Your criteria is the thing that your dog must do in order to earn the treat. We want these to be small, attainable steps. Think about building Lego blocks, not not cinder blocks with your dog. I believe it was Hannah Brannigan that I've heard first say that. We want to provide a training session where our criteria is something that our dogs can achieve. And I've talked about this in our shaping video, which you can find on the channel, in our loopy training videos, which you can find on the channel. And again, we go into this in depth in our foundations course. But odds are there's an issue with your criteria, your rate of reinforcement, or your timing. And this is something you may not be able to see unless you video yourself training and watch it back or let somebody else watch you train. Second, the reinforcer you're using isn't reinforcing. This very well could be a reason that the positive reinforcement is, is not working for you at this time. So we tend to think that if something is reinforcing to our dogs, it will be reinforcing the same all the time across the board. But that's just not how it works. Um, for example, I love ice cream. I love ice cream. I just do. However, right now, as I'm filming this video, it is the middle of winter here. It was negative 12 degrees out this morning when I went outside. So 
ice cream, if I have just been outside doing chores with my sheep or my horses, and you want to reinforce me for that by giving me ice cream, that is not going to be your most effective reinforcer right now. Because when I come in, I'm cold. I want to sit in front of the fire with hot chocolate. I don't really want to eat a bowl of cold ice cream. Now, in a few months, when it's summer and it's 90 degrees outside, then yes, ice cream is going to be a fantastic reinforcer option for me. So just because something is reinforcing for your dog in one moment doesn't mean it will be reinforcing for your dog in another moment. And it's our job as our dog's handlers and trainers to not only figure out which reinforcers to apply when, but how to manipulate the entire training session so that our dogs can actually find something reinforcing. So just as a quick example, let's say that your dog struggles to focus on you around other dogs. And let's say that your dog loves hot dogs, except for when there's another dog around. One of the things that you could do is make sure that that other dog is far enough away and calm enough that your dog can take food. So if your dog can't take food 20 feet away from a barking dog, but he can take food 30 feet away from a dog who's sitting still, we're going to start at 30 feet. So these are all the things we're looking at and we're thinking about when we are setting up training sessions where our dogs can be successful. The third reason is that you're probably thinking about positive reinforcement as the treat that is currently in your hand. And there are a couple of places that, or um, there are a couple ways that this can be a hang up for people. First, treats, praise, and toys are not the only positive reinforcers at our disposal. Anything that increases the likelihood that a behavior can happen again, will happen again, is a reinforcer. So this is something we talk about a lot in our academy is we talk about using non-food reinforcers with our service dogs or non-toy, non-praise reinforcers. So that's one place is a limited thinking on what reinforcer is. The other way that this can create an issue is when we fail to think about the history of reinforcement for a behavior. So it is not just about the one treat that's in my hand. It's about all the treats I've ever given my dog for performing that behavior. The more treats I've given my dog in the past, the bigger that bank account is and the the more likely my dog is going to be able to do that behavior in any given situation. So recalls are a really good example of this. We tend not to give our dogs treats for coming when called as they get older, or a lot of us tend to take recalls for uh, kind of for granted when our dogs are puppies and they want to come to us and stick around. And so our dogs don't have a huge bank account for coming when called. And then all of a sudden they get off their leash, they're chasing something, we want them to come when called, and they don't. And we say, see, the treat in my hand wasn't good enough. Because it's not just the treat in your hand, it's all the other treats your dog has ever gotten. So recalls and going to bed are two examples where we use we use a history of reinforcement to help us a lot. So that's another thing we want to look at is have there simply been enough repetitions to create a nice solid bank account for that behavior. Fourth, perhaps you are accidentally setting your dog up to fail. So this is something we talked about a little bit already, which is that idea of setting up an entire training session where the dog can be successful. It is really important to remember that it is not your dog's responsibility to set up a successful training session. That is your responsibility as his trainer to set up a training session where he can be successful. Just like when we send a child to kindergarten, it is not our kindergartner responsibility to set up a successful learning environment where they can learn the things they need to learn. That's the teacher and the school's job to set up a successful curriculum and a successful environment. So we don't take a kindergartner and say, okay, let's do algebra. We take a kindergartner and we say, this is the number one, this is number two, right? So, but a lot of us don't do that with our dogs. We don't set them up for success. So it's our job as our trainer, to, as the trainer, to look at the entire training session. How am I delivering food? Where am I delivering food? What's my criteria? How am I setting my dog up to be successful? Do I understand things like how distance, duration, and intensity impact a distraction? Have I slowly proofed my dogs around, around this particular distraction? 
I think it's Steve White, but I could be wrong. If anybody knows, let me know in the comment, who says something along the lines of, our dogs don't fail. They perform as trained. So when our dogs fail, we have just not fully trained them. So it's our fault when our dogs don't do what we want them to do, whether we've done something in that moment to mess them up or we just haven't fully prepared them. It's our fault. And that sounds really depressing. That sounds like I'm blaming you, but I'm not because this is actually good news. If it's our fault, if we're the ones who failed to, pre- to prepare our dogs, then we're the ones who are well, it's well within our control to fix it. It is well within our control to fix it. And that is very good news. The exception here when we're training service dogs is if you have a dog who's really just not a good candidate for service dog training, which is the vast majority of dogs on the planet. So there is kind of an exception to this one here in the service dog training world. And that is the very real possibility that the dog in front of us is not a good good service dog candidate. More dogs are going to wash out of training than are going to make it through. So the next reason that positive reinforcement might not be working is maybe you're not using management to help solve a problem behavior. So let's say you're working through a problem behavior, digging, nuisance barking, pulling, jumping, getting into the garbage, um, whatever this problem behavior is. Maybe you're not using management to help your training process along. So here's what I mean. Whenever our dogs engage in a problem behavior and it gets reinforced, which if the behavior continues to exist, it is being reinforced somehow. Maybe not by you, but it is being reinforced. So every time our dogs engage in that problem behavior, they are being reinforced. If we want the behavior to go away, we have to stop that reinforcement. So for example, if my dog is digging, Um, in a very specific spot in the yard. Maybe I'll just put up a little fence around that specific spot, like just a little stick in the ground sort of portable fence. Does this solve the problem? No, of course not. But it does temporarily keep them from digging in that spot. If my dog is getting into the garbage, I could put my garbage somewhere my dog can't reach it. Does this teach my dog not to get in the garbage? No. But it does prevent him from reinforcing himself with the garbage while I work on a training plan to teach him not to get to the garbage. Um, Management is something we talk about a lot, a lot, a lot with puppies because it is your biggest thing that's going to make or break your experience with a puppy. Um, For example, cats are a big one if you have a cat in your home. I do. So whenever I have a puppy come into my home, we manage very carefully by not giving that puppy access to the cat unless I am there to help that interaction go successfully. So management may be something that you are not taking full advantage of when you're trying to solve a problem behavior. This is absolutely something we can help you with in the free Facebook group, Train Your Service Dog with Confidence. Again, the link is in the description. Um, We can absolutely help you find a management plan that works for you because management plans look different on everybody in every lifestyle, and that's okay. Another reason that positive reinforcement might not be working for you is that you're not using the right method for your dog. So a method is a recipe. It is a step-by-step, do A, B, C, D, and that is how you train the behavior. Just like if I want to bake a chocolate cake, there are hundreds or thousands of recipes for how to bake a chocolate cake. And they're all going to turn out as chocolate cakes, right? Assuming I implement it correctly. We'll get to that. I can provide you with numerous recipes to train any one behavior, but one may be better for you and your dog than another. So positive reinforcement is not a method, okay? It is a reinforcer. It is a consequence that increases behavior. It increases the likelihood that a behavior will happen again. Just like a punishment is a consequence for a behavior that decreases the likelihood that a behavior will happen again. Neither of these things are methods. Okay, so a method is the step-by-step process you're going to go through to teach a specific behavior. I know four different ways to teach a dog how to go to a dog bed using positive reinforcement. They're all different methods. So maybe you're using a method that just simply isn't right for you and your dog, and you just need to try a different method. However, more likely than that, you're just not implementing that method as cleanly or correctly as you believe. This is extremely common, like just extremely common. 
um, where we think we are implementing something exactly as the instructions tell us. But when somebody else watches us train, they see that we're not. This is very normal. I'm going to give you two examples from my own life that aren't dog training. Okay. So one is I use positive reinforcement with my horses. And this has to be done very, mm, it has to be done correctly because horses are large and if they get pushy, they can be dangerous. So horses really do have to learn the right skills in order to be able to use positive reinforcement. That's not the point. The point right now is that I took, I, I've been struggling Last year, I was really struggling with one of my horses because he's very excitable with food. So I took a course um, on positive reinforcement with this species, because every species is a little different. And um, I thought I was doing this exercise exactly as the trainer told me. Like, I thought I was doing this exercise exactly like she said in the course. So I posted a video and I said, this is where we are. What feedback do you have? And it turns out I needed to tweak just a couple things teensy tiny things like I just needed to deliver the reinforcer a little differently and I needed to tweak my timing so I was clicking in just a slightly different spot the moment I did that no more problems we f we just flew through the re through the rest of that exercise so I thought I was doing it perfectly but I was not. I was not implementing it correctly. Another place that this has happened to me is in physical therapy so I took an online course for a very specific physical therapy type of issue. Um, and it was great. It had lots of good exercises, very clear instructions. I thought for sure I was implementing them correctly. But after a couple of months, I was still struggling. So I went to see a physical therapist in person. And she goes, yes, you're doing all the right exercises, but this is the muscle you need to engage, not this one. So she had this tiny little muscle engagement change that I needed to make in order to be successful with those exercises. So I was doing the right exercises and I was doing them 98% correct. She said my form was good. I was doing the right amount of repetitions. I just had to change this tiny little thing about which muscles were being engaged. And as soon as I did, I had lots of success. So more likely than you needing a different method, you probably just aren't implementing the method you're using quite as cleanly as you should be. And that's very normal, especially if this is new to you. So have somebody look at it. Have somebody help you. Okay. I cannot, cannot, cannot tell you strongly enough how important it is to video your training and at minimum watch yourself back, but preferably have somebody who knows more than you do watch that video. Um, because that is where you can really start to see improvement. Okay, so we've got two more here. Another reason that positive reinforcement might not be working for you is that maybe you don't have the skills to use positive reinforcement effectively in this situation yet, or your dog doesn't have the right foundation skills he needs to use positive reinforcement successfully in the situation. This is very normal and there is nothing wrong with this. Not having the skills to do something correctly yet does not make you a failure. It makes you a learner. It makes you somebody who's still learning, who's maybe new, who's maybe intermediate, or who maybe, like me and my horse example, I am a very advanced clicker trainer, okay? I still needed somebody to say, actually, you need to do things a little bit different because your horse doesn't actually have the skill he needs yet, okay? So it's very likely you just don't have the skills that you need if you are not seeing success using positive reinforcement in a specific situation. It is very likely you just don't have the skills you need yet. And so you need to do things like ask in our Facebook group, join our foundations course, talk to your in-person trainer, talk to your training friend, read another book, watch another YouTube video. You just, you need to keep gaining skills and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, or your dog still needs foundation skills that he's lacking in order to be able to use positive reinforcement correctly. So back to my horse example real quick, because I think sometimes when we take this away from dogs, we can see some more clarity with it. My horse that I was talking about in the previous example, he's very young, he's very excitable, he's very high energy, and he love, love, loves food. He also has a sort of naturally, like, slightly pushy personality. 
um, as a label there for you. So he is exactly the kind of horse that could become very dangerous with food reinforcers very quickly. So in order for me to use positive reinforcement successfully with him, the first thing I have to do is provide him with the skills to be calm, to be uh, physically quiet, so not moving a lot. Um, I need to t- I needed to teach him how to take food from my hand politely. Uh, I needed to teach him what to do in between repetitions so that he wasn't in between repetitions throwing his body around and potentially hurting me. So he had five he had five skills he needed to learn before we could use positive reinforcement to teach a behavior. And then those first behaviors we taught were things like targeting, were things like standing at a station, were things like backing out of my space when asked. And then once we had those foundational skills, then we could take those foundational skills and we could build on them to build new skills. So when a dog fails to take to positive reinforcement, Often the handler and or the dog are just lacking some skills and there's literally nothing wrong with lacking skills. The only thing that there is, the only thing that's wrong with lacking skills is taking no effort to improve them is taking no effort to learn more. And there are lots of ways that you can do that. I'm making YouTube videos again. We have a whole bunch on our channel. I am not the only channel that's talking about using positive reinforcement training. You can join our free Facebook group. We're going to be starting live streams again in there. We have my coaches are in there all the time. We have some very experienced members in there. You can join our foundations course. The link is at the description of this video where we take you through step by step all of these skills that you and your dog need to know in order to create a strong foundation in using positive reinforcement. And while we do that, we also create, I like to think of them as Lego blocks, a bunch of different Lego block behaviors that you'll then be able to take and rearrange to create lots of more advanced behaviors down the road. So if you think you and your dog are lacking skills, just find them. Work with a trainer in person, work with a friend, read some more, watch some more YouTube videos, find a good positive reinforcement Facebook group, take a course. There are lots of options to keep uh, keep growing your skills. So that is what I have for you today. Remember that positive reinforcement isn't a method, and if it's failing, it isn't being used right. And that just means we need to learn how to use it better. So I hope that you learned a lot. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video anywhere that other owner trainers might find it helpful, subscribe, check out the link in the description, all the things, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.